or treat. Ah! <laughs> iPhone sizers, uh, thank you for coming by, checking this out. Uh, we have a special treat for you today. We have an interview with Ravity Domse, and she has a really awesome project through a really awesome program that we're going to get into um, that uh, I think that you all should know about. I've known Ravity for a number of years. I think she's an exceptional talent, um, and she's got a hell of a career ahead of her. And I think uh, the sooner she gets making movies, the better it is for all of us as movie fans. So um, I'm going to, we're going to introduce who she is and talk about the project she has coming up and uh, how it's through um, the AFI's uh, uh, Women Directing Program, which is a really cool program. Um, yeah, and we'll find out a bit more about that. Ravity. Hey! Uh, where are you right now? I'm in Mumbai. Um, I don't live here, but I was born here. And so, yeah, I'm here for uh, personal family uh, matters. Uh, my grandfather recently passed away, so I'm here uh, to do the last, his last rites with the rest of my family. And um, it's just a time of peace. And I'm really glad I get to be here before I dive into this next project because so much of my next project is um, like, you know, taking me back to my South Asian roots. And uh, it's it's really nice to be in that space before I like really dive into it creatively. So yeah, tell us a bit about what the project is and like how you know uh, how this, this this trip kind of might wind up informing or or has informed or you know tell us a bit about your project. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm just gonna word vomit at y'all. Uh, so my project is called Triping, and it's done through the directing workshop for women at AFI and it is about a young woman who comes to the house of this wealthy surgeon to teach his deranged wife how to speak English and while she is there she realizes that there's some strangeness going on in the house and she realizes that perhaps this wife is not as deranged as she seems and she's she's getting a little freaked out she's she's starting to see some shit and while she's there, the strangers grows, and it's about these two women ultimately having to uh, come together and escape uh, this house. And I, I really wanted to do something that was like in the get out vein um, of horror, and I wanted to uh, like, okay. Let's, let's also like set the framework here for like Bollywood cinema, okay? So for all of you who know about Bollywood cinema, there's like so much cinema like churned out each year, right? And you've got musicals, you've got action films, you've got everything, but for some reason you have no horror. And I think that is so fascinating because it's, it, it says so much about like the culture and about escapism, but there's so much like horror and just like the space we live in to like tap into and I'm really excited to get into that. So the cultural phenomena that I really wanted to look at was something that not my mom had experienced but the women around her had experienced. So my mom was uh, in a relationship and she had me and we moved to America and she raised me on her own because she got a divorce. And though she doesn't really like to talk about that, she really like found a community of women. And in that community of women, we realized there was a lot of women who would like get into arranged marriages and then like move to America with a guy that they had just met four weeks later. And then suddenly they'd be in this space where they didn't speak the language or they didn't, uh, they didn't really know anyone. They barely knew the person they were with and they were suddenly disconnected from their entire network. And that's insane. There's, there's like, like there's so, like there's so much horror in that. Like, Something, there's some, something so uniquely terrifying about being in a space, but being unable to communicate what's so scary about it. And I think that is, like in a lot of ways, that's the immigrant story. Um, English is my third language. And so uh, to get to a place where I could like communicate through my stories, uh, you know, this, this kind of inherent terror is like, I'm, I'm lucky I have the ability to do that. And so I want to be able, uh, through Tripe, to like, tell, uh, talk about uh, something that I, I think is so unique to South Asian culture. And um, so yeah, I, I compare it a lot to Get Out in that way because I think that Get Out similarly uh, took this, um, took like the black experience and was like, here, let me uh, make you empathize with that. And so that's that's really what I'm hoping to do with Trifene. Um, it's called Trifene because 
Uh, if you're familiar with uh, the patron saint Tripeen, uh, a lot of people believe that she is the person the Bluebeard fairy tale is based off of. And so Tripeen is a retelling of the Bluebeard fairy tale. And, uh, but specifically through a South Asian lens. And so that's, that's kind of where it's coming from. Um, like I said, I'm just going to talk, talk about it a lot. Do you have any, do you have any so specific questions? Yeah. What, um, let's talk about the, uh, uh, the, the AFI program that this kind of mm -hmm. came from. Was this, uh, was this story idea that something that you had in mind prior to this, to, to the AFI, uh, program or? Yeah, so it had been percolating for a while. Um, I think that the way that I personally build out my stories is I build them out through one striking image uh, because I do a lot of genre work. The last film I did was a Western and that came out from the uh, Andrew Wyatt painting, Christina's World, if you're familiar with that piece. Uh, and so for this one, uh, I've been, been really diving into Artemisia Gentileschi's work uh, especially her Judas and Holofernes work, which was, um, if, if you're familiar with it, it's it's basically a girl like hacking away at a guy's head and uh, sawing his head off. It's great. And it's done in this beautiful Renaissance uh, style. And uh, just a lot of use of shadows, the oil, like the colors are beautiful. And I, uh, uh, I recommend taking a look at it. But that's usually where my ideas come from. So, I, I've been looking at the painting and I said, hey, I want I want to do something on this piece. So when the AFI Directing Women's Workshop came along, I was like, okay, now is the time for me to really sit down and figure out like what is the story I want to tell. And what's so great about this workshop is that uh, even just with like the application process, they were so intent on figuring out what made me unique. And they were like, what like what is the story inside you that like needs to get told that has not been told yet? And so through that, I was able to write, uh, to write this piece, to write Trifeme. And I think what's really interesting about Trifeme too is that I'm I'm not a horror person at all, uh, to start off with. I, I get scared very easily, and I, um, I, <laughs> I, Edward Scissorhands is a scary film for me, so like that's that's where we're starting off with. But I, I, I think that what, that's what kind of what makes this piece so unique is that I just started writing this film, and it wound up being a horror film. And so I was like, I guess, I guess this is this is what it's got to be now. So uh, yeah, I've, I've been really doing a deep dive into the genre as well. Cool. So uh, let's yeah. let's. Uh, there's a couple of questions I have based on this, which For is sure. first is is uh, if you could, you say you start from a striking image. What was yeah. the striking image that 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 really that that spun off triping? So uh, the image that's thrown up tracking is actually Artemisia Gentileschi's work, uh, Judas okay. and Corporate. Yes. So it's, it's the piece. Uh, so for those of you unfamiliar with the piece, I think that the story behind it is kind of important as well. Um, it's in, in her piece, it is about uh, Judith and her maid. And Judith is sawing off Holofernes' head. And uh, Artemisia Gentileschi had a history of um, abuse and she wanted it, she wanted to talk about it through her paintings uh and she was really she was really obsessed with justice for women and how like to achieve that through her work and she was one of caravaggio's mentees and so back in those days when you were the mentee of a painter you would repaint one of their paintings um, you would basically do a case study on it so with Caravaggio's work, uh, he had also painted Judith uh, sawing off the head of Paulo Farnese, uh, along with her maid. But if you look at Caravaggio's painting, Caravaggio being a man, um, if you look at his version of the painting, it's uh, Judith has this very like calm, pristine look on her face. And I think that the most signs of strife you can see in that uh, painting of her is like she's got to like her brow is a little furrowed, but like otherwise she's just like nicely slicing off this guy's head. It's great. Um, but uh, there's there's no there the, there's no weight behind it. And then Artemisia Gentileschi looked at her ment a mentor's uh, painting, and she's like, "This is not really how a woman would kill a man." And so she went ahead and repainted it. And if you looked at her version of the painting, it's far more brutal. Judith's like got her sleeves like rolled up, like she's got this like ferocious look on her face and she is hacking away at this guy. And it is fantastic. Um, and I think like that differentiation between the male gaze versus that female gaze, um, something that goes 
that far back is so crucial. And so the striking image that I wanted to, um, that's, that's a striking image I wanted to build this film off of. Because I think you look at stories like Jane Eyre and about, it's all about like the crazy woman in the attic and uh, how, how like perspective is everything when it comes to that and how, uh, you know, it, like, like women are often, their trauma is often belittled or it's often written off as hysterical or crazy. And so I wanted to create a film that tapped into that and then ultimately was about female solidarity and was ultimately about believing women. Cool. And so yeah, that's, that's the striking image that, yeah. I, that, it, uh, that comes out of it. No, I, I love the idea of like, of, 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 cause usually, you know, it's the, the idea of the male gaze is, is associated with, with just kind of, it's almost just kind of a, a sexuality or, uh, you know, whereas is just how pervasive it is. And even like the interpretation of a murder is, yeah. is inaccurate. You know, it's not, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I, I find that really fascinating. Exactly. Um, so I, think, I think that there's so much to be seen about like women and horror as well in the way, like, look at the way women die in horror versus the way men die in horror. And I, I know that I'm not the first person to talk about this, but it's just like those little things is that even how like women's cries of death are sexualized in a way that men's aren't. Um, when a guy dies in a horror film, it's either silently or it's done in a very like, wow, he really went down swinging. But when a woman, woman dies, it's usually her, like listen to the way she screams. It's almost like sexual or like it's trying to like fetishize it. And it's, it's, it's weird. Like women's pain is always shown through in a very interesting way in horror. And so like, I want to bring a, a new kind of reality to it, I guess. So yeah, without, without, you know, yeah. like getting, I guess, spoilery or, or, or whatever, can you give us kind of a sense of, of how you intend to do that? Yeah, of course. Um, so I really wanted to, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out like, how do I, well, if you've read the Bluebeard story fairy tale, if, you, if you've been around since the 1700s, spoiler alert, you might already know how the story ends. Um, but I think it's really about the way you tell it. And so for me, I wanted to uh, capitalize on this idea of uh, hysteria, paranoia, and even like themes of like gaslighting. I think that's super interesting. Um, it's, it's about these women who are trapped in this in this big house and what does that house stand for? It stands for like patriarchy, patriarchy it stands for colonialism, um, which also India has a very interesting relationship with colonialism having been under British rule for so long. Um, so it's, it's, it's about like finding those little pieces. But in terms of like establishing it, I see it as just like a good old fashioned thriller, like, hey, I heard something. You didn't hear that too? Like what the fuck is going on? Um, and strange things are happening and I don't know if I can believe myself or if, like I can believe her or it's like whose account do I uh, hold like or do I give value to um, and it's it's really about that so conflicting narratives unreliable narrators and then ultimately having to trust your own instincts um, I think that's that's what it comes down to uh, yeah so I mean, and, yeah in terms of more like get out girl walks home alone at night. Uh, the favorite I kind of consider like is this horror thriller space. I think they did some very interesting stuff that I'm like down to uh, explore there, even with thoroughbreds. Uh, there's like, I could throw comps at you all day, but um, that's that's kind of the space that I'm excited to uh, live in. Cool. And then, so yeah, let's, let's go into the AFI, um, the, 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 the AFI directorial program for women. How, like kind of take us through like what the program is, how the process you went through to get into it, and um, it's it's uh, only a you and is it eight other women? I I am um, the eighth woman, so there's me and seven other women. Awesome. Yeah. So um uh, uh yeah, take us the kind of yeah. what is the program? How did you get in? And uh, and like what does it do? Yeah, so let me talk a little bit about the program. So AFI's director workshop for women that started out in 1974 um, it like in that first class Maya Angelou was there so I've, I've got some pretty big shoes to fill um, and it's been it's been going strong ever since uh, they were dedicated from the very beginning to increasing the number of women in Hollywood uh, specifically women directors 
and uh, they decided to do this through this tuition free program. Uh, and so, started in 1974, has been going strong ever since. Um, it's kind of like grad school. For those of you who have applied to grad school, that's kind of what the application process was about. Was like, I had to write a bunch of essays, I had to get a bunch of letters of recommendation, and I had to go through uh, several interview processes. Uh, the last of which was this weird speed dating thing, which uh, if, if we ever hang out, I can tell you about in depth. But the idea is you are in like this pressure cooker situation where you have to like talk to six people in uh, the span of, what is it, 35 minutes, but you only get five minutes with these people and there's a timer and it's a whole thing. Um, but at the end of the day, out of the hundreds of women that apply, uh, only eight get picked. Um, and so I'm very fortunate to be uh, one of those eight women. And what that means for me now is that I will be raising the funds for this film uh, through this program and then uh, through the Receive and Spark campaign that you can donate to it now. But uh, I'll be raising the funds uh, for this uh, short through this program. And I'll also be taking classes. So in a lot of ways, it is structured like a graduate program. Um, we've had our first few workshops already in which we've talked about the script, we workshopped it with uh, various industry professionals, we had a uh, round table circle with some studio executives, so they're putting us actually in touch with the people that we would hopefully go on to work with, and then also they've, um, they've, they've scheduled about three to four weeks of classes for us starting in May, and so from there we'll be in class every day, and it's, it's like a full lecture circuit. Um, they've got some really cool people. Uh, lined up for us to uh, uh, learn from. I know that uh, Jessica Simeon from Dear White People is going to be one of our teachers. And so it's it's just, it's going to be grad classes all over again, but like the grad classes that you want to go to, I guess. Um, and I, I think that that is so valuable. Um, and AFI really puts an emphasis on not only the education part about it and making sure that you understand just the pantheon of female directors that are out there but just don't get the attention. Um, and they teach you about like the struggles they went through and then as well as like here's their work so you can actually learn from it and then we can continue to add to this foundation of like amazing female directors. But they also try to prepare you for the real world, I guess. Um, but the, the amazing thing about this program is that there are so many accomplished women in already. Uh, fun fact, I am the youngest woman to ever be part of it. Uh, the other women who are in this program have already like gone on and like made features and stuff. Um, but what I think is really unique about it is that everyone has such a specific perspective that they come to this program with. Uh, one of the women is a mother, one of the women just like moved here from the Philippines. And for me, I really take it from a writing perspective. Uh, I am currently a writer. Uh, I work on TV and film projects and it's it's just a different, it's, it's what I bring to the table, and then obviously I have uh, these like unique, weird genre pieces that I want to do, and so I think that's what really makes me special about you know, in this program. But uh, that's a little bit about the process, a little bit of what it's like. Uh, grad school is really the best way to describe it, I would say, but at the end of the day, it's ultimately about bringing more women into the space and bringing more women into Hollywood and just increasing the number of uh, female directors out there, uh, especially female directors who are women of color, because if like the level of women directors is like here, like we're 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 all the way down there, um, and so it's it's just about like telling cooler stories and like making sure the people with their perspectives are actually there to tell those stories. Um, yeah, that's that's the program. So uh, in order to get uh, Trifine made. You have yes. a seed and spark happening. I do. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, unfortunately, AFI like doesn't is I guess is not able to just kind of dump a bunch of funds in everybody's coffers for this, which is understandable. Um, and so everybody's got to raise money for their their film. Uh, so uh, uh, tell us about the seed and spark. Tell us about like where they can find it and um, how you know. Uh, uh, it may beyond just kind of the the good warm feeling it gives your soul to to give to the arts. Like, how could it be uh, kind of a benefit to to the generous people who want to give to this? Yeah. So there are. Uh, okay. Let's talk a little bit about the Stephen Spark page for a trophy. 
uh, how can you help? There is, uh, there's a few ways. Uh, one, you could donate, um, which your money would go through to uh, sets, it would go to locations, it would go through all the bits that you know you need to make a movie with. Um, or it could go to, uh, uh, or you, if you don't have money to actually donate, you could donate goods and services, that's also an option. The nice thing is, is that everything is tax deductible uh, because we are a 501c nonprofit organization. Um, or I think I'm supposed to legally say your taxes may be tax deductible uh, considering on your current uh, financial situation. But the point is, we're 501c. Uh, if you donate to us, you're most likely able to get a tax write-off, which is really, really cool. Um, but like, warm, fuzzy feelings. Definitely donate for that reason. But I would say donate to Trifing because you should support unique stories. You should support South Asian cinema. I want to do something really weird and just out there and like contribute to the horror genre in a whole new way. And I think I can make something cool here and I would love to have you join me on that. If you donate at our Seed and Spark page, which is at Seed and Spark slash fun slash trifing, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of cool incentives. Uh, I went down to curse someone for you for $50 if you go ahead and like take that incentive tier. So we, we've got some interesting incentives on there because I really just had to try to have fun with it. Um, if you just like seeing me get scared in the dark, you can go ahead and click on watch that video. Um, and it's 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 definitely a journey and like I'd love for you to like be a part of that. Um, and so yeah, that's where you can find our Seed and Spark information. And I'm thinking, what else would I like to talk to you about? Um, I think that's it. I don't know, Z, do you have anything else I should say? Uh, um, I, I, I have answered it? everything, even questions that like I started to come up with because I was like, why, you know, because you, you said yourself you're you're not a you're not you're 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 a self admitted non horror person. You're you're somebody that's easily frightened, you know. Um, so yeah, just the idea of of why you know what attracted you to the horror genre? Like, what did you, you know, for, for this story, you know? Yeah. Um, which you pretty so much did answer already, but yeah, I mean, yeah. if you want to, it, it was, it was kind of, you were, you were describing a lot of things. So it, what was, what was the, um, the, you were, no, it was great. You were like on a roll. I didn't want to break it up. Uh, but like, like what exactly it is about the horror genre do you think would, is, is what really benefits telling of this story or what makes you want I'm, I'm not answering this correctly. I'm or not, I'm not asking this correctly. I understand your question. Um, I think that what's so unique about their horror genre is that it transcends language barriers, which is what a lot of this film is about. Um, this film is about the inability to communicate with other people uh, are around you. Um, our, both our women in the film are bilingual, and so this uh, film takes place not just in English, but in uh, Marathi and Hindi as well. It's, it's about overcoming these communication issues. And I think that horror is a universal language. I think people understand fear wherever you are. And I think that it also is a great way to generate empathy for people. Um, and when you feel so distanced from someone because of a thing like language, or when you feel distant from someone because they come from a different country or they're from a different cultural background than you, how do you get to a place where you like understand them or empathize with them? And I think that by putting them in a life-threatening situation is one of the best ways to do that because immediately you can connect with that and be like, I understand that person and that person doesn't look like me, that person doesn't sound like me, but like I know what, like that is terrifying as fuck and I would be like, I know how I would react to that and suddenly I am that person. And I think that we can use horror to bridge cultural gaps in very interesting ways. And that's kind of what drew me to this genre. Um, like I said, when I started writing this film, I did not expect to write a horror film. And it just kind of wound up being that way. And so I think I came through it in a very roundabout, organic way. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of why horror is so important to me right now. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, yeah. yeah. Of the 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 web information that should people want uh, to find out more to donate the Seed and Spark, well, the information is just below this video uh, in the descriptions. And uh, if you like this video, fun sizers, and want to uh, see more interviews, uh, subscribe, like, share the video, share the video to support uh, Ravity. 
Um, it's a really awesome project. She's a really awesome person. She's got a really awesome team behind it. Uh, like I said, um, the sooner she's making movies, the sooner it's better for all of us as movie fans. All right. So that is that. Thank you, Raven, for joining us. <laughs>